Good afternoon, everybody. This is Fego Franklin III with New Stitch Media. Today, I am joined by CEO and president of uh, Beyond Sports, Jimmy Kimball. How are you doing today, buddy? Awesome, Fago. It's it's awesome. I uh, I appreciate you having me on. Been looking forward to catching up with you. I know, right? <laughs> so before we get into your journey, let me give you a little bit of background on Jimmy. Um, he actually gave me the opportunity to intern for his company in 2014, which was a huge thing for my resume. So again, I, I'm very grateful for that opportunity, my friend. Hey, you've been grinding for six years now. And like I said, I've been following your success. And I, I love seeing interns and guys that have come through the process and are doing as well as you are. Um, you know, not everyone is cut out to, uh, you know, to deal with the grind and, and you've never stopped. Well, amen to that. Amen to that. Thank <laughs> you again. So, be <laughs> so before we get into your journey, uh, can you give my viewers some words of encouragement for today? Yeah. So, you know, if, if there's anything that 2020 has taught us, you can't stop, you know, outside of everything that's going on in the world, you know, from an athletic standpoint, it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get back up. And that's all we can keep doing. You know, we're going to try to make 2021 the best year ever. And, you know, I'm hoping that everyone out there has a healthy, a prosperous, just an absolutely awesome 2021. And if there's anything the National Scouting Combine can do for you, that's what we're here for. So I know you had just mentioned your company. Tell me a little bit about your company and how you started it. So, you know, it's it's interesting. There's, there's the long version and the short version. And, uh, you know, in a nutshell, our company started out as Beyond Sports Network. Um, we really started out as a social network for the athletes. Uh, we wanted to bridge the gap between athletes and coaches at every level. And our goal was to create something a little bit different uh, in terms of how they connected and how they could promote themselves. And over the years, we started hearing the same things. I was sick and tired of hearing players going through the same things I was going through 10 years, 20 years prior to. And that was when they went to events and combines, you know, what was the opportunity? Was it legit? Why was I paying for it? Where was my information going? Who was going to get it? And yada, yada, yada. I was mm -hmm. lucky enough to participate in the NFL combine back in 2000, went to the national championship, the hula bowl. I was very fortunate throughout my career. But the NFL Combine stuck with me. It's an experience you just never forget. And I wanted to create an event that would be, dare I say, um, a similar type of, of experience. You got to see it firsthand, and it's only gotten better. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to go out there and search the country and the world for the best athletes that can play professionally. But here's the catch. You know, for most of the events out there, they talk about getting to the NFL or the CFL. I mean, that, that's the mm -hmm. pinnacle of professional football. Forgetting there's a lot of opportunity to play indoor football, playing in Europe. You know, uh, the XFL, when it comes back, uh, you know, if arena football ever comes back, my goal in setting up this event was to give athletes a chance to find their home. But it was also about finding that opportunity through the numbers. What do the combines tell us? Fago, you and I could go set up a combine next week and we'd probably get some kids to show up because mm -hmm. it's a combine. We set out to change that narrative and give these kids a chance to realize maybe I'm not going to make it to the NFL. Maybe I've got to start my career at the indoor level. Now, I mm -hmm. played for Virginia Tech. I had everything handed to me. I had no idea that the struggle is that much worse at the lower levels. I had tunnel vision coming out of college. Now I love helping the small school athletes because we've helped a lot of small school guys make a name for themselves because most people out there, all they need is an opportunity. That's what we provide. And, you know, we've had athletes from 11 different countries come to our event. We've had athletes nationally go overseas to play. That's the beauty of, of what we do. We try to do it the right way. And, had I not had a chance, you know, when I was with the New England Patriots back in 2000, I tore two ligaments, my kicking foot. I then brought my, um, basically I, I brought my career back by coming up through the ranks of the arena football, two league arena football, NFL Europe back to the NFL. And it was a long road, but honestly, I had the most fun 
playing arena football. I mean, it's like ping pong <laughs> for football. <laughs> it's just back and forth. I mean, they have scores, you know, 75 to 82. Um, mm-hmm. I'd never seen anything like it. And being a kicker, there's nothing like putting a guy over the boards as a kicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what we try to tell these guys, you know, and, and I know it's cliche, but they all put their pads on the same way. It's like high school mm-hmm. recruiting. You know, we provide the same standards of testing at the high school level, and we do it through our nonprofit foundation, the BSN Foundation. You know, whether you're playing Division One, whether you're playing D3, whether you're going to the NFL, whether you're playing in Europe. The last time I checked, the pads are all made by the same companies. They all put them together, and they all wear them the same way. Mm-hmm. But it's about being real about your level of competition. So mm-hmm. that's why we we do what we do because – I want to help these guys understand that there is a process and, you know, the higher up on the, the pyramid you get, the less standing room there is. So sometimes you got to get to the the next couple of rungs down and work your way up to that point. And I know you had mentioned to me that it's going on 10 years now that you started this. Yep, what does we're that coming mean up on our 10th you? annual event. Yes, sir. What does that mean to you that you have been able to help young athletes, uh, young athletes to sell to that next level. You know, I'm proud of it, mm-hmm. but we didn't get here without all the people and the support from day one. You know, guys like yourself helped us mm-hmm. get to this point. I've got some of the best combine staff in the world and I will dote on them 24 seven because they make this possible. And it really mm-hmm. is. It's about the experience. I'd like to think that we put together a really good, efficient combine experience for these athletes. And we're very transparent. Mm. If you show up and show out, you have a chance to make it or Mm. it's show up or shut up. Uh, Mm. At the end of the day, we're going to put you through the same standard of testing that they get at the highest level. I mean, the NFL combine is the pinnacle of testing. Okay. Mm. We, maximize on that. And, you know, we've, we would like to think we've perfected the combine experience, except it's not a two to three hours on one day. We bring these kids in, in waves, um, you know, at the pro level for the aspiring professionals, we give these kids a chance to experience everything, to network, to make a name of, for themselves. We've seen division one guys come in and only improve their level. We've seen no name guys that, you've never heard of completely changed their lives. You know, mm. we've been lucky enough to have, you know, Teron Beckham came a couple of years ago, Odell Beckham Jr.'s cousin, mm. <laughs> bench pressed 225, 44 reps. Mm. He didn't warm up. I've never seen anything like it. We, you know, we've got the video on our YouTube, mm. but to be going into year 10, knowing all these experiences without my staff, without the interns, without the support from our partners like Trazer and Fusion, the sports arena, A-game performance, and everyone else, they're the reasons why we've been successful. You know, mm-hmm. and my goal is I hope we have an interview 10 years from now when we go when we're going into our 20th annual event. So long as the athlete, the athletes are looking for opportunities, we're going to be there to provide for them. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give young entrepreneurs about building their brand and marketing the right way? Patience. (laughs) Um, (laughs) There's nothing like patience. Um, You know, I started my company when I had three kids. Now I've got four. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of patience involved. It's also about finding the right people. I'm not going to lie. It's, you got to have the right surrounding, the, the, the right, um, it's not just about the people, but it's what they bring to the table, the positivity, the energy. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, you know, it's great. We have so much help. And, you know, all these guys are the most wonderful guys. You know, trust me, every day is a challenge. Um, mm-hmm. To be an entrepreneur outside of patience, um, you got to have your goals. You got to know where you're going. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit the first few years we were running this event, you know, we were kind of all over the map and it took Mm -hmm. about five years to really hone in on what we wanted to accomplish, what we wanted to do for the athletes. And that's Mm -hmm. why I'm in business. I'm here to help athletes. My kids, they're all athletes. And, you know, I can kind of separate myself as both 
CEO and dad, mm-hmm. what do my kids need so that I can help your kid and his kid and her kid? And, um, you know, and again, at the high school level, we test all athletes, male and female. We're hoping mm-hmm. to develop those relationships for those that are aspiring to play in women's pro soccer and pro rugby and pro lacrosse. Um, it's about finding, you know, who you are as an athlete. And that's the thing about being an entrepreneur. Um, a lot of people usually say it's about the 10 year mark where you can really figure out if you're there. Most companies don't make it past three years. Mm. So to know we've gotten this far is, is a big deal, but it takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of throwing mud up the wall. I mean, trust me, if I, if I could line my house with whiteboards, <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't find an inch because there are always ideas, but it's also being realistic about your goals. You know, you see all these, these great, um, uh, uh, coaches and, and, uh, inspiring people, you know, Tony Robbie, you know, Lewis house, who used to be part of our network back in the day. Uh, I knew him when he broke his arm. Uh, you know, we were trying to help him through the process guys like that, that figured it out. And there are a lot of people out there, but you gotta be focused. You gotta have patience. You gotta be focused. You gotta have goals and then find the right support system. It's hard mm-hmm. to go it alone. And as I joke with my partners, as I joke with my staff, I got a hundred ideas a day, but mm-hmm. if I don't have them telling me, love the idea, this isn't going to work. Um, you can't have yes people. You have to have people that are willing to say, this is how you need to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And that that's really my thing is goals, focus, you know, patience and a support system. If you don't have those four things, it's, it's really tough unless you win the lottery. Then it's easy. Mm-hmm. So now, I, I know you, you play the lottery play. too. <laughs> <laughs> now I know you used to play for the Patriots as well as Eagles. Now I know the Eagles played the Redskins this uh, this past weekend. Did you like what Doug Peterson did? And what message does that really send young kids that are trying to reach that top tier level? You know, it's it's funny because I'm a Giants fan, so I was pulling for the Eagles. Um, mm. It was killing me. I, I don't understand it. I'm not going to pretend to to know what Doug Peterson was thinking. Um, I, I thought it was very interesting to pull Jalen. I thought he was doing fine. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is where I put my kicker hat on. In my eyes, I thought he was doing great. Um, mm-hmm. The, uh, you know, as far as what they could have done, I didn't think Washington was playing well enough to win the game. Mm-hmm. But then again, you know, you know what Alex Smith went through. You know what Ron Rivera is going through. You know what I mean. I live 15 minutes from Redskins Park. You know, mm-hmm. to know everything that's going on in the back end. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, you know, this is a sentimental side of me that I was kind of happy they won. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as the guys that are trying to get there, uh, look, I when I was with the Patriots, I was behind Adam Vinatieri as a kicker. When I was mm-hmm. with the Eagles, I was behind David Akers. Unless I was going to pull a Tanya Harding on them, you know, it's tough to unseat, you know, future Hall of Fame pro, but two of the best kickers in the history, you know, of the game. Um, great guys. You know, it's, for me, the experience was I got to know some amazing individuals. I got to see, you know, the the pinnacle of kicking, the pinnacle of sports. I mean, I still believe that the best athletes in the world live in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, you can create a beam, you know, it says change my mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but for the guys that are trying to get there, you got to have an open mind. You mm-hmm. know, I, I feel like this, in this day and age, you have too many athletes that are so – blinded by the media, by social media, by all the hype, you know, the Mm. last thing that can really exist in your mind is all the outside hype. Because until you've been Mm. there, until you've actually been in the locker rooms and you've met with these people, you know, some coaches you're going to love, some coaches you're not going to like, you're not going to understand that they got their own ways of doing things. I got to, you know, know Bill Belichick for a handful of months when I was there. I got to know Andy Reid when I was with the Eagles. Um, they're different styles, but you got to have an open mind. Mm. And the only thing that I tell these guys, and I tell them, you know, come in March when it's time to talk to these guys, you got to be willing to leave it on the field. You mm. can't show up wondering, did I put every minute in there? Did mm. I train to the best of my abilities? 
you know, did I really leave it all, you know, all the, the sweat, blood and tears in the weight room? Did I get out there and, and run? You know, you look at the epitome of Kobe Bryant and the way he trained. There was no one that was going to outwork him. But to get to the NFL, there's nobody that can outwork you. The problem is I think too many players now rely on the fact that I've got a big social media following or mm -hmm. I was this good. I mean, it's funny. When I went from high school to college, my dad still tells the story of how the first conversation I had with him, you mm -hmm. know, after the first practice was me mm -hmm. saying, Tad, everybody is good. Mm -hmm. And then you get, to, and I, I played in the national championship with Michael Vick. I mean, I, we were one of the best teams in the country. Unfortunately, we lost to Florida state and Peter mm -hmm. work, but you know, when it's all said and done, I'll never forget my first day in the Patriots locker room. And it was like, Oh my God, these guys get bigger. They get better. It's a different mindset. And it really is a business mindset. That's the only other thing is mm -hmm. you've got to come to the game. I, I think too many people, yes, you can make money on the branding and the personal media, the personal branding, the social media and everything. Mm -hmm. But most people forget, unless you're, you've got some massive signing bonus, you're still playing for league minimum and you mm -hmm. are as expendable as the next guy. It's not the NBA. It's not MLB where you're guaranteed money. Mm -hmm. You're not guaranteed anything unless, you know, like JJ Watts said, you know, rent is due every day. Mm -hmm. If you're not putting that time in to earn that spot, don't come back crying to us, you know, and mm -hmm. I tell these guys to come to our event, don't come in saying I run a four, three and run a four, six, come mm -hmm. in with an open mind, be humble. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I believe is missing is humility. Too many people think they got to come in going, look at me. I'm the best. You want me because there's confidence. Mm -hmm. The talk it's about walking the walk. You don't have to, you know, go out there and tell everyone how good you are. If you're that good, mm -hmm. the right people are going to notice. So, you know, for me, uh, it's no difference than being an entrepreneur. I mean, this is, this is your business, build it up, mm -hmm. be focused, but put the work in. Cause if you don't trust me, there's someone else five minutes away or 500 miles away. That's putting in that work. That's going to take your position, take your job. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your favorite experience just by playing in the NFL? Um, that's a good that's a good question. You know, I like I said, I've been very fortunate. I've had a lot of amazing experiences. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to NFL Europe on this one. Um, okay. You know, I was in between. You know, having been injured to building back my career, um, I was the only kicker that got into NFL Europe without being allocated. That's unheard of. Mm. Um, <laughs> knowing how much time my father at was actually my agent, knowing how much time we were putting into. And when I say time, I'm talking about hours that I spent training, mm. um, you know, as I joke, you know. 20 years ago and, you know, 25 pounds ago, um, mm -hmm. no one was out working me as a kicker. And my father basically put it on the line and flew me down to, you know, Tampa Bay or wherever we were. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we spent all of our own money to get to NFL Europe. My dad basically called him out and said, look, if, if he screws up, if he doesn't make it, if, if he doesn't do it, you didn't spend a dime, just let him go out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss any field goals than mm. the three day tryout. I actually unseated two of my friends from teams, unfortunately mm. got, you know, got drafted as the number one kicker that year to the Cologne Centurions to this day. I had never had, or up to that point, I had never had a winning field goal in a game. Mm. We get to Hamburg and in like, I think double or triple overtime in the pouring rain on a field that, you know, a decent high school here wouldn't play on. Um, I mean, it was just, it was such a, a mess. Um, we get down for a 37 yard field goal. Peter Voss, who I loved him as a coach, you know, he didn't take any slack. He had his own way of doing things. You know, he reminded me a lot of Bill Belichick and he called a timeout, iced his own kicker. <clears throat> and I come running over to the sideline. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> 
you know, me telling the head coach, like I'm the kicker, mm -hmm. you know, he could have been like, Hey, you kick the field goal instead. And he said, just be patient and watch. And he sent out all the trainers and the equipment people with towels mm -hmm. and literally dried up my plant spot. Mm -hmm. Ran off. I kicked the field goal because the the other kicker from the team had a chance to win a few, to win the game, mm -hmm. and kicked and slid right into the center. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was. Uh, and he was mm -hmm. great. I mean, all the kickers were great. And I hit my field goal. And mm -hmm. to this day, I mean, I still get goosebumps about it because it was the first time I got a chance. And that game, you know, put us in playoff contention. And mm -hmm. For all the things that could have gone wrong in that scenario, <clears throat> not to mention as a kicker getting iced by your own coach, it mm -hmm. gave me a chance to kind of take a breather. It was like my dad always said, you know, it's like one of my mentors, my father, we had this idea of channel three, mm -hmm. getting folks, whatever that channel three is for you. You know, if you've ever seen the movie for love of the game with uh, Kevin mm -hmm. Costner as the pitcher, you know, clear mm -hmm. the mechanism and all the sound goes away. And I can mm -hmm. honestly tell you, to this day, I still don't remember kicking that field goal. I don't remember kicking, you know, or punting most of the field goals because you get into that zone of I've done this a million times. Mm -hmm. And that comes that comes down to the training. If you have to think about it mm -hmm. on the field, you're doing something wrong. I mean, I hate to say it, you're not a true athlete because, I mean, how many times can a Tom Brady, a, you know, an Odell Beckham or any of these amazing players go out there Mm -hmm. and just do their job without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can still go out and kick a field goal. It's, it's going to hurt a little bit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. a little bit extra. you know, but I might be a better kicker now than I was then because up here I'm a smarter mm -hmm. player, mm -hmm. you know, but that's, so that was, you yeah. know, as far as my favorite moment, you know, I was kicking that game winning field goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how was that experience just being around Bill Belichick? You know, it was, it was unique. Um, you know, I grew up in a very strict household, you know, father mm -hmm. was government, mother was, you know, a nurse. I didn't get out of anything, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day I played in a soccer game with 103 fever. I went to school, you know, nowadays mm -hmm. you get arrested for that. <laughs> you send your kid to school with a, <laughs> with a, with a fever. Um, I really liked him. You know, I mm -hmm. liked how he was a no nonsense guy. He just expected and demanded Perfection. He, he reminded me a lot of like uh, Denzel Washington and remember the Titans, mm -hmm. you know, there was a certain way of doing things to win. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And like I said, I, you know, I came in Tom Brady and I played against each other in the hula bowl. You know, mm -hmm. I came in, I watched how dedicated he was to all the little things. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of people forget it's the little things that make the big things go. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I love the fact that, he didn't need the attention. He didn't mm -hmm. care about how cool something was, mm -hmm. but he was dedicated to the game. Um, I would have loved to have played for him, you know, for a lot longer. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would have loved to have been part of the team and been part of that whole, that whole run. Um, mm -hmm. But he was just, you know, behind the scenes. I thought he was an awesome mm -hmm. guy, <clears throat> but, but I'll never forget I was because uh, they signed me as a punter and I was kicking mm -hmm. with the uh, punter was Lee Johnson. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I was doing field goals and, you know, puns, but I would do field goals after practice and I was kicking and mm -hmm. I, Lee Johnson, you know, this guy was, he was just a great guy. He was a day trader during practice, you know, after practices. I mean, just, mm -hmm. he was a unique team. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he was like, Hey, let's keep backing up. Mm -hmm. 45, 50, 55, 60. Now, no one else has left. There's only a couple of people, but Bill Belichick mm -hmm. and Brad Seely were walking off the field. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, you know, Bill looks over at Brad, the special teams coach, he goes, who's that again? <laughs> I'm like, <"Do> you, guys <laughs> <see me?" laughs> you know, he was like, oh, it was Kibble the punter. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, didn't we sign a kicker too? And he says, yeah, well, he wasn't doing all that great. He didn't have a good preseason. Um, and right when I get back into the locker room, his – the kicker's uh, locker had been cleared out. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you've got to be mm -hmm. kidding me. Mm -hmm. I learned then, you know, what a business this was, but also that Bill wasn't messing around. And, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, 
about a week and a half later, I tear two ligaments in my kicking foot, you know, doing the slow roller with special teams. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, I tear it one week prior to the Hall of Fame game, my first preseason game, you know, which would have been against one of my teammates, John Engelberger, you know, with the 49ers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it was a tough way to learn. But again, that's what got me into, you know, moving up. But, you know, Bill Belichick was just, I liked him, you know, not, not everyone likes him. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I liked the way he coached, but that's just me. Mm, I agree with you on that. Um, And my last two questions for you Um, right now, we're going into wildcard weekend. What teams are you looking forward to watching this week? Well, you know, being local and NFC, you know, NFC East guy, which was pretty Mm -hmm. horrendous this year. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pulling for, for Alex in Washington. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see them do, you know, some amazing things. I'd also like to see Tom, you know, kind of prove everyone mm-hmm. wrong that it's not just the team, but that he is a leader. Um, you know, it's been hard to follow the NFL this year, you know, mainly because, you know, no fans, it's, it's just not as exciting, but now that it's playoffs, mm-hmm. it's, it's a little easier to kind of focus on who's doing what, um, not to mention, I've been more focused on the college game, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, scouting the players for our event. So, you know, right now I'm pulling for the Redskins, you know, they're, they're down the street. I'm hoping they do well, but, uh, honestly, I'm kind of waiting to see how this whole thing shakes out. You know, I just, mm-hmm. I want to see everything come to completion and get to the Super Bowl. I and just, I, I think it's anyone's year. And, and I agree with you, but I just had uh, a notification with breaking news that I think six or seven people from the Browns organization had uh, tested positive for COVID-19. So that's oh. going to be a huge, yeah, a huge factor when they play the Steelers. Oh, absolutely. Unless Brad's going to, you know, Maynard's going to play like four different positions. Um, <laughs> it all depends on which players and which positions got them. Um yeah. But again, this was also a incredibly unique time for the backup players, mm-hmm. whether you're in pros or the college. I mean, this this was a chance. It's sort of a double-edged sword. <clears throat> it's mm-hmm. a great opportunity for the guys that may not have seen the field as much to prove mm-hmm. themselves. But it's also a reflection on the recruiting and the scouting departments. Did mm-hmm. you do a good job? You know, because when you look at Alabama, their first team is as good as their second team is as good as their third team. I mean, mm. I guarantee the water boys could kick, you know, the butts <laughs> of other, other teams. I mean, it's just how they recruit. Um, mm. So I think it's been very enlightening. And I think this year's, you know, it's like Moneyball. Did we get mm. the right players to finish this out? Because mm. regardless of who got COVID, regardless of injuries and stuff like that, you got to play for those every year. Mm. Um, this year is just a little bit different because you could have more people out. Um, but there's really no excuse for not having the backup plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's enough money out there to have a backup plan with the right players. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. if there isn't, we'll have players for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good, point. Good point. And before we let you go, um, where can my viewers find uh, your, your foundation for one thing as well as your organization? So we've basically, since, since you've been a part of this, we rebranded everything under, you know, the National Scouting Combine, the website right there, nationalscoutingcombine.com. Um, <clears throat> you know, we provide the closest, dare I say, the closest experience to the NFL Combine for athletes from all levels uh, mm-hmm. to compete and potentially put their name in front of the pros. And at the high school level, our BSN Foundation, 501c3 Private Operating Foundation, uh, we're always looking for donations and financial support that allows us to run these events for the athletes, um, you know, especially the underprivileged kids that don't get a chance to, you know, go to all these different combines. Mm-hmm. But Fago, something that we've included that I think is worth noting <clears throat> and what separates us, because it really is about separation for the coaches, the mm-hmm. athletes, the players, the agents is I've created a proprietary algorithm that can mm-hmm. almost predict what level you can athletically play at. It's not about mm-hmm. what sport you're good at. Cause again, Bill Belichick, Dabo Sweeney, Nick, you know, Nick Saban, these guys all find the best athletes and turn them into incredible players mm-hmm. for us. You know, I've spent all these years trying to figure out what is the combine data tell us? 
And that's mm -hmm. honestly, that's what's making us more unique is the athletes that come there. We can actually give them a grade that will more or less predict <clears throat> what level you could compete at right now. So, you know, Fago, if you're a scout in the NFL or the CFL, if you're a division one or division two athlete or coach, mm -hmm. my grade, I need to be able to tell you why this player could step on the field and potentially compete. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily need, you know, it's, it, they're not necessarily going to be the right player for you because mm -hmm. I want you to review their game film. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to have 10 scouts in the room say the same thing about one player. They all have different needs. Mm -hmm. And for us, we're trying to grow that to help, you know, players go pro mm -hmm. across all levels, but at the high school level through our foundation, the catches, we provide the events at the high school level 100% free. And that's why we're trying to raise the bar. We're actually going to Charleston, West Virginia in two weeks to run a volleyball combine. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. working with uh, Kaishan Jarrett, former DB coach for the Washington Redskins in Charlotte. He's the new athletic director for a charter school. We're going to look to run a massive event down there for all athletes. Um, the big thing for us is – the more support we can get, the more athletes we can influence, we can help and, and really provide just an amazing experience with the educational information that they all need. And I think that's lacking in a lot of events out there. No one's being told what they need to work on or getting the feedback they need. They leave with, oh, I ran this and I jumped that. What mm -hmm. does that mean? And you saw it firsthand with guys trying to go pro mm -hmm. six years ago and you've been watching it every day since. Mm -hmm what separates one player from the next it gets back to your question of you know what does it take to be an entrepreneur what does it take mm -hmm. to be a pro <clears throat> well we separate it all through the numbers because mm -hmm. we'll be able to identify in a matter of hours after your combine did you put the work in are you really a division one athlete are you an nfl athlete and if not where can you go to continue on that career and continue on that path and that's that's why we do what we do. We're here to help the athletes. Amen. Amen. So you heard it first. You know, you have to have persistence. You have to have passion and you have to have a purpose. And Jimmy, again, thank you for coming on this um, show. So you can actually reach me on my Instagram, which is Super Journalist 87. You can follow me on Facebook, which is Fago Franklin III. You can follow me on my LinkedIn, which is Fago Franklin III, or either if you want to search in the Google search engine, you can put it in Fago Franklin III, and you see all the clips of all the interviews I have done with your favorite exclusive interviews with artists, entrepreneurs, people in the media field, celebrities, as well as athletes. Again, this is Fago Franklin III. Thank you again for joining me, um, and definitely have a blessed one, Mr. Jimmy. Hey, you too. Thanks again for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Always. All right, now.